Hello, my name is Stephen Thomas, and I'd like to ask you a question. Which laws are written in our hearts under the New Covenant or New Testament? So here is the question. And I'm referring to this book called the New Testament. And in Jeremiah 31, verse 31 to 34, it talks about people who are going to embrace this New Testament book and this New Testament covenant are going to have certain laws written in their hearts. So let's read you the prophecy from Jeremiah 31, verse 31. Behold, the days come, says the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, says the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, says the Lord, so sort of later on, I will put my laws in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God, and they shall be my people. So there's the prophecy from um, Jeremiah 31, verse 31 to 34. And in fact, if we then go to the New Testament, to the book of Hebrews, this is referred to by the writer of Hebrews, presumably Paul, when he writes. In Hebrews 8, verse 7, and I'm going to start with verse uh, Hebrews 8 verse 7 for if that first covenant had been faultless then should no place have been sought for the second so Paul is comparing the first and the second covenants for finding fault with them he saith behold the days come says the Lord when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, said, says the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. So you will recognize that this is exactly the same that Paul, or the writer of Hebrews, is quoting from Jeremiah 31, verse 31. And then, in fact, if we want to emphasize it even more, we could go to Hebrews 10, verse 16, where the same thing is quoted again. So, I come back, back to my question. Which laws are written in the hearts of New Testament, New Covenant believers? Now, the word for testament and covenant are the same word used in the in the New Testament, and it's the word diatheke. Here we go, Strong's Greek 1242, diatheke, and testament is used sometimes, covenant is used another time, and this word diatheke actually means a, somewhat a cross between a covenant and a testament. So testament refers to when someone dies, in this case Christ died, and he leaves us a testament, and it also partially refers to a covenant that God or two parties make, God being the one party and his new covenant but believers being the other party. Either way, whether you want to call it covenant or testament, there is something written in the heart of new covenant, new testament believers. So what is that? That is my question to you. Well, what is written on my heart or what should be written in my heart? That's a very big question because it was prophesied. And here we sit, so we have to examine what should be written in our hearts. Now there'll be a, a group of, I don't want to say, super pious believers who will say, that's a very easy question. The law written on the heart is the Old Testament, Old Covenant law. So the law does not change. It is the Old Covenant law that was written on tablets of stone and now it is written in my heart. And generally, these are people who keep the Sabbath, and I'm not trying to mock them at all, but it's very good. And they tithe, and maybe they keep the Old Testament feasts, maybe they 
um, don't eat unclean foods, and then maybe they have a prophetic ministry, preach about the coming of the Lord, and so on. I'm not saying anything wrong with these things, but I'm just saying they are the people who will normally happily speak out that the law, the law, the Old Testament law, the law does not change, God does not change, is written now on my, or in my heart. And we don't, we look somewhat down on those people who don't keep the law, meaning don't keep the Sabbath, and don't possibly keep the dietary laws. They, they these law-breaking Christians. So there's, there is a group of people who are quite zealous for the law. And in fact, even in the early times of Acts, there was this group of people who were saying, you must circ be circumcised to become a Christian, and you must keep the law of Moses. You must keep this whole old covenant law. Now, are they correct in saying that it is the Old Covenant law, laws, and in fact there are 613 of them, mitzvot, that, we, that the Old Testament talks about? Well, I just want to get you some of those 613 laws and ask you, is it in fact those laws which is written in our hearts? I'm going to ask those people that one of the 613 laws is they must rec recite the law morning and evening. That is in Deuteronomy 6 verse 7. Do they recite it morning and evening? Um, do they wear a binding, a teflon on the head? That was one of the 613 laws. Do they bind a teflon on the hand? Apparently there was some sort of um, physical writing of the law that was under the Old Testament law. I'm not the one who made up these 613 laws. Do they have something bound on their hand? Do they have a tassel or blue thread on the corners of their gar garments? Do they, that was a law, do they attach a mezuzah to the doorposts of their houses and gates? Um, on, do they praise the Lord after meals as Deuteronomy 8 verse 10 commands? So that's another one. And I could, I could just go through laws such as, do they take an oath by God's name? That's what it's commanded. When you, must, when you take an oath, you must make it by God's name. Or, or have they already, did Christ say, don't swear at all? So isn't that a slight change from the Old Testament law? You swore by God's name, whereas now the, under the New Testament, you don't swear at all? Hey, the Old Testament, you were told to swear by God's name. New Covenant, we were told by Christ, don't swear by God's name. So that's definitely a change. But we keep the whole Old Testament law. Okay, well, do you keep the, all the temple commandments that you must guard the sanctuary, the, the, the cones or the priests must wash their hands and feet before entering the temple? And there are dozens and dozens of these Old Testament laws, the showbread, the ark, um, the anointing oil, that a priest must only marry a virgin. No, no, well, no, we don't have the priesthood, we don't have a temple, but we believe in those laws, and we would keep them if there was a temple and a priest. Well, you don't keep squat because there's no temple, there's no priest. Sacrifices, twice daily burnt offering, and there goes through on the feast, you must have more offerings, and there's a sin offering, the burnt offering, the guilt offering, the peace offering, and there's dozens and dozens of these sacrifices. No, 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 we don't keep those laws because there's no temple, there's no place to sacrifice. Maybe we would. Well, do you subscribe? Is that what, are these sacrifices, are these laws of the tabernacle written in your heart? Well, not really. We keep the Sabbath, we we don't kill, steal. We kind of keep the Ten Commandments. Some people say, yes, we keep the law, but the Sabbath we but doubtful about. Even, even though Hebrews 4 verse 9 says, there remains there for the keeping of the Sabbath of a Sabbath to the, the people of God. But hey, we're not here to argue which laws. Well, what about all the vows, no, about the Nazarite vows? No, 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 we don't keep those Old Covenant laws. What about ritual Purity, defiling by touching things, dozens and dozens of these, leprosy and women with issues, you know, the normal period, they're unclean and touching a human corpse. No, we don't bother about that. Okay, what about all the donations to the temple laws um, and, and how you value them and how the fruits of the trees of the fourth year and leaving the corners of the field and the sheaf for the poor and bringing the first fruits to the sanctuary. No, 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 we, we don't keep those laws either. Okay, so you don't keep 
Those laws are not written on your heart. Come on, just admit it. I don't think it's talking about those laws. So which laws is it talking about that should be written in the heart? Oh, well, some people say, we're not really under the law. My heart is filled with love, but there's no laws there because, you know, Christ came to do away with the law. So there's nothing written on my heart. Well, is that a valid argument that there's nothing, no laws are written in your heart? What about even the law that says you must love your neighbor or that I give you a new command that you love one another? Isn't that a commandment? Isn't that a law? At least acknowledge there's some one law that has to be, oh, yes, well, there's love in my heart, but otherwise my heart's very uneducated. There's no other laws written in my heart. Well, I just want to go to... There's a website which I was doing a search. If there's 613 laws of the Old Covenant, how many laws are there of the New Covenant? And under Christian Assemblies International, CAI.org, I found that they had gone through the New Testament and found 1,050 laws. So, of the New uh, Testament or New Covenant laws. And I found that very interesting because here I printed them all out. Like, they, they start with seven abstains from Abstain from idols, fornication, strangled meat, eating blood, Act, Act 15, 20. Meats offered to idols, all appearance of evil, fleshly lusts, and so on. And they, they, have, they go through three things, uh, seven things to avoid. Troublemakers, profane and vain babblings, false signs, unlearned questions, foolish questions, genealogies, arguments about the law. That's Titus 3, 9. So they go through and they categorize seven things to avoid, abstain, asks, Two things to awake to, awake to righteousness, awake to life. 74 Bs, be exceedingly glad, be reconciled to a brother. Well, be perfect, be wise as serpents. So there's all these commandments. Under the new covenant, there are laws. Christ gave those laws. There are now laws which Christ and the New Testament endorses. I might not call them laws, I mean, let's just call them be this or avoid that. But they are clearly things that we as Christians need to do. Those 1,050 laws. So go and look them up. It'll be a very interesting study for you. CAI.org will give you, or just look up a Google search, 1,050 new covenant laws or commandments, and you will find them. So clearly it is that which is written in our hearts. And clearly... If, we've got, if there are 1,050 things we're told to do, clearly as Christians we should be very busy people. There's plenty for us to work on. Let's take one law that forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. Okay, there's a commandment. As we do. And Christ in other places said that if you don't forgive someone, well, God's not going to forgive you. So it's like a law. You shall forgive. You shall not hold a grudge. So... It's not a suggestion, it's a commandment under the New Covenant. That is, what, for example, one of those laws that is written in our hearts. In conclusion, I'd like to go back to Jeremiah 31. What precipitated or caused God to want to have a New Covenant? In those days they shall say no more. The fathers have eaten a sour grape and the children's teeth are set on edge. But everyone shall die for his, his own iniquity. Every man that eats the sour grape, his teeth shall be set on edge. God got tired of punishing the nation of Israel for their sins. Group punishment. For example, if they rebelled, then they had to wander 40 years in the wilderness. Or if the fathers um, rebelled, the whole nation was taken into Babylonian captivity. So God felt that this was unfair. So he was saying, you eat the sour grape, your teeth are set on edge. And that is the essence of the new covenant. It's a different covenant, a different law. Another proof that the laws are different is in Jeremiah 31, 31. Behold, the days come, says the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers. Not according to the covenant. So it's not exactly the same laws and covenant. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them unto the greatest. So it's not a covenant based on people telling others what to do. If you don't do this, we're going to stone you. So the new covenant has different laws that impose through self-regulation upon the Christian themselves.